Hi guys and welcome to this Halloween special of um, I Put A Spell On You by Screaming Jay Hawkins. I love this song, it's really cool and especially for Halloween. I mean, if you ever get a chance to watch the original by Screaming Jay Hawkins do this, there's a version with David Sanborn floating around on YouTube and it's just really cool, you know. I think they're all as high as kite but, you know, they really enjoy themselves and it's a great kind of atmospheric sort of piece. So on Satscast you'll find the full sheet music for this plus the backing track as well. As a Halloween treat, what I'm going to do is the entire tutorial. I'll release, release the entire tutorial on YouTube for absolutely free. You've got the full version here. If you've got on Satscast, you get to watch it on there, plus you'll get the backing track and the sheet music. So please do come and check out Satscast. There's loads of sheet music on there and loads and loads of tutorials and resources for sax players just like yourself who wanted to get the most out of the instrument and really get as good as they can do without you know necessarily having a teacher close by i really have put a lot of effort into making sure it's exactly what you need so let's go on with the tutorial then so this is basically in three it's got a solid three going on throughout you'll hear in the backing track this one two three one two three i really suggest you listen to my full performance of it before actually tackling the video lesson just so you get a really good feel for how the piece goes it's not exactly like the um the original because screaming jay hawkins completely goes off the wall with his screaming and yelling and shouting and obviously you're going to have trouble doing that on the saxophone so this is sort of a saxophone arrangement of it in the style of Screaming Jay Hawkins I'd say really. Um, there's a couple of little effects that I want to cover first and the first one is this double density note, this kind of timbral effect. What we're going to do is we're going to play a C natural here so just normal button C and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to play low C and go back to C again but instead of going Instead of doing that, what I want is two versions of the same note, which is this normal C, and it's, it makes this really cool effect. So what I want is this. So all you're hearing there are two Cs, but it sounds great. It's a really cool jazzy thing. It's just a nice cool effect and I think it's one that you should do. So literally what I'm doing, I'll just do that again in slow motion. So I've got C natural, so I'm playing a regular C and then I'm going to flick quickly to low C here. So all six, little finger down. And what I'm making sure is instead of opening up my throat, I'm going to keep the same throat shape that I had for my C, maintain that exact same shape and move my fingers without using my tongue. So I'm going to play normal C, play all the buttons in the low C there, keep my throat the same, and then go back to the normal C again. So C, low C, C. It's worth just doing that movement with your fingers first. C, low C, C. If I open up my throat in between, I'll get something like this. You see how it's wanting to drop down? But what I'm wanting to do is maintain that C. And it's a really cool effect that you can use later on. So that's the first thing to sort of um, worry about really. Just get your head around doing that little movement. C, low C, C. Just do the fingering first. Then use your throat to maintain that same note. You can just practice playing that low C, but play it as a middle C. So. I've got the low C finger in, which should sound like this, but I'm playing that upper note. So there's also scooping, so pulling the jaw down. So remember that one, there's a video here on YouTube and there's loads of videos on scooping and lip slurs over at Satscast, so do check those out if you don't have to do lip slurs. Okay, so let's get started with this then. So we've got this three going on that's constant, consistent three going on. It's very much a waltz sort of feel, a dark Halloween waltz. And also, if you're playing it on tenor sax, which we're going to be doing in this lesson, then you want to be thinking about the two flats there. We've got B flats and E flats. There aren't many E flats actually lurking in this piece, but don't worry too much about that anyway. But just in case, we've got this B flat, which is our first finger down. I'm going to use this one throughout as well. So this B flat here. 
And also I have E flat, which is all six keys and the little finger down there at the top. If you look on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that now, that little bit there. Okay, so the first thing, so we've got A bar rest, so we're listening for this one, two, three, two, two, three, three, two, three, four, so just count that through. A little tip for you here guys is whenever you've got a big break, always count it as the first beat of the bar being the number of bars that you're into your counting, that way you don't forget. Um, especially if you know we have to spend lots of time playing in sort of orchestras and bands and stuff and often you'll have like a 24 bar rest and you've got to count 24 bars and it's like okay you go one two three one two three one and then once you get into sort of 18 19 bars you're like uh was that 18 or was that 19 never let that happen to you never let that happen to you so instead anytime you've got a big rest you're going to go one two three two two three three two three four two three that way you're not going to forget and it just makes life a lot easier so you replace your first beat with a three a four a five a six a seven an eight until you get in so we're going to start here on a g so just a normal regular g one two three and we've got a minimum so it's one so nice and easy, lots of G's, G, 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 B flat, and notice when I play that G there, I'm going to actually have my first finger down ready on that B flat, I don't have to get that afterwards, I don't have to go, oh there's a B flat in here, I'm going to switch my fingers from that G, that'd be a waste of time, so as I know that this piece has got lots of B flats in there, I'm going to prepare my hand, my left hand first finger is down, there look at that, it's ready, I'm ready, so as soon as I lift off those two fingers, B flat is already waiting for me. Not like this where I've got, ugh, I've got to move all of a sudden. Too many movements, we want to, you know, we're lazy as sax players. We want to move as little as possible. So there we go, there's our G, lift up to the B flat, there's a G. Okay, so this wants to be kind of free as well. You, you can take your time with this actually. You don't have to play it exactly as this rhythm dictates here. If you listen to my version, you'll notice how some bits I'm, I kind of play lazily and some bits I kind of hurry through. And that's part of making this a really interesting sort of tune. If you want to do it strict in time though, we've got one. So you've got that big long G there tied together. You can see that down here that it's all tied together. So we're going to hold that note on and we're going to put lots of vibrato on it as well, make it sound quite cool. I put a spell on you. And as you hit that note, put some vibrato on it, fade away as well. Generally speaking, you want to fade away on these long notes a little bit. And then next line, because one. So that's one D D one two three one two C natural B flat G. Five bars of rest. They go by really quickly. And it seems like a lot of five bars of rest, but in this it's one two three one two three. So it flies by. End of the line. Two G's. On to that next one. So that is. D with the octave key, C, C, D with the octave key again, C, C, D, C, D, C, C, D, C, C, D, C, rest again. Then we've got that little double density thing. Notice the little plus there over the C's. We're going to play regular C, low C, and back to regular C. So hopefully you've practiced this. If you haven't, then you should pause the video right now and have a good go at it. <laughs> Because that bit's really important, it sounds cool, why would you miss it out? Don't miss it out, practice it. Good. Da -ba -da. So that's just like a little interjection there. Bum, 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 ba -da -da. One, two, three, one, two, three, starting on the these. Next line. Cause you're mine. It's got a little bit of a fall going on there. How are we going to try and replicate that on the saxes? We're going to play that F sharp. So one, two, three, middle finger there. And I'm gonna roll down the keys. You could play this, you could play um, side, a good opportunity to play side F sharp here if you want to. So if you want to be really fancy about this, you've got part, um, D with the octave key, D with the octave key. Then you go up to this F sharp, so one, two, three, regular F. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my ring finger to find out the little key here. On sax casts, in stage, I think stage four, I've done a trills and flicks key. So it's a little video all about the different keys that you can actually use to make the same note. So this is what we call side F sharp. F, F sharp, F, F sharp, F, F sharp. So I'm just going to get used to doing that. It makes it a little bit easier to go down to whenever you want to go from F sharp to F natural. Just lifting off that key. Rather than doing it the other way, which is playing the F sharp, 
and then flip into the first finger like this. So you get F sharp there, F natural, F sharp, F natural. It's a little bit, it's a little bit sort of clunky. And if you listen, it's quite noisy as opposed to, it's a lot quieter. So it's worth practicing that side F sharp there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to play that F sharp and then I'm going to roll down every note in between F sharp and D chromatically. Chromatically moving down semitones. So imagine your keyboard, I'm going to play every single note in between those two. So I've got side F sharp, so first, one, two, three, first finger, F sharp key. Then lift off the F sharp key, that'll give us F natural here. Then E. Then E flat, so one, two, three, all, all six, and the little finger at the top, and then release the E flat key, and that'll give us D. So slowly we get. And that's the effect you're wanting to get. So you just hold the F sharp on a little bit, and then roll down every single note chromatically. F sharp, F, E, D sharp, D. Then we hold that on for three beats. Have our little break again for three rests, rests, and then we come in with this high D. This is one of the screams. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna scream out this D. This is a different effect though to the low notes that follow at the end of this line. So we're gonna scream out this D. You can even growl on it if you want to and go as you play. So what I want to make sure is that I scream and then I come down. So I've got a high palm key D, which is the one on the outside here. So it's the palm key that's closest to you. I'm remembering that these fingers are nice and relaxed and loose. These fingers are relaxed. I'm not doing anything funky with these fingers. I'm literally just planting it around the saxophone. I'm really relaxed. And when I want to press this, press this D key down, I'm just going to use my wrist. See my wrist there? I'm not going down and people go around like this and try and like, I don't know, give the big sax a big hug or something, it's, it's crackers. So try and just do as little movement as possible. Remember, lazy sax players. So we're just gonna play just the wrist. All that happens is I'm just, look at my forearm. My forearm here and my wrist is just gonna collapse onto that D. My fingers stay exactly where they are though. My fingers are still in exactly the same place. So there's that palm key D. Then we're going to drop down to G, normal G, B flat, and D. So ba 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 So G, B flat, D, a little G minor arpeggio. G, B flat, D with the octave key. G, G, B flat at the end. And then we're going to do another D. We're regular D on this next line with the octave key and fall off it. So again, I'm doing all I'm doing there is a chromatic rundown D, C sharp, C natural, B. If you don't know how to do this, falls, get over to Satscast to find the video. Bow. There's a fall. So it's, the whole thing about this is you don't really hear the bottom of it. You kind of hear sort of the ghost of the bottom end of it, if you like, a really quiet version. But really we're hitting that note and then we're falling away. And then to B flat. So that's a little bit quick that guys, so you're gonna have to work at practicing, practice that bit in particular, it's quite tricky. Ba 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 there's your rhythm. Ba 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 you think about it like in numbers. Three, one and two and three and one. So that's B flat, D, G, G, B flat, G, D, two, three, one, two, three. Then we've got these Fs. So that's F, F, G, down to low C, all six buttons with your little finger right at the bottom. Next line, we're just going to hold that C on, carry on, one, two, three, one, two. And the things that you do, I don't know if that's the lyrics, but that's what came to mind at that moment. F, F, G, C, so that's F with the octave key, two of those, ta-ta, using your tongue, ta-ta, G with the octave key, down to C, D, C. There, one, two, three, one, two, three, I put a spell on you. That's G, 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 B flat, G, G. And for the next line, got this big rest, because, on the Ds. 
So long do there with the octave key, make sure you're counting that through. I'm not thinking, oh look, if I add all that up, there's a dotted minimum, that's three beats, there's a minimum, that's two beats, and it's tied to a project, oh my, that's six beats. I'm not going one, two, three, four, five, six. Instead, I'm going one, two, and three, one, two, three, one, two, three, right at the end. So I'm counting this all through beats wise, not in how long each one is, but in where beats land. So stage one of Satsacast is all about rhythm and all about finding exactly where beats land in the bar. And that's what makes you sound pro, makes you sound really good. So make sure you're following that guys. Always count, count. Don't count length of notes, count where beats land. And for the next line, we've got ba bum, ba bum. So we've got B flat with the octave key to G and we're gonna repeat that. So we're gonna go. So B, G, B flat, G, B flat, G, G. And fall off again if you want to. Right then, okay, so now it kind of goes on to our solo. I've simplified the solo a little, a little bit from the original, just to make it a little bit easier to play. But what I have included are the altissimo notes. Altissimo is the very extreme ranges of the sax. You might struggle with this. If it's completely new to you, you're gonna have a hard time with this bit. What you can do is put everything that's right up the top there down the register. So if it's down the register, you're gonna have an easier time playing it. And also you're not gonna to be too hung up about the high notes at the moment, especially if you've not been playing the saxophone very long. If you've not been playing the saxophone very long, I'd stick this down the octave for now, just to really get to grips with the actual tune and then try and put it up anyway. I'm gonna, I'll go through the finger in any, any way so you can have a good go at it, but check out the section on Altissimo on Satcast when it's available. I'm gonna be doing that over the course of the next couple of months because that way, you know, you're gonna have a much easier time with this. So it starts off with this little kind of G minor arpeggio thing. So that's D, G, B flat, D with you, palm key. Down to, now this D here, what we're going to do is play a regular palm key D, but I'm going to do it tumbrally again. So we're going to play palm key D for the first one. And then your next one, what he does on the, um, his solo in the original recording, this is like the album version, he plays a regular D again, but just with the palm key. So he goes. So literally what he's doing there is he's taking off his thumb. So he's playing palm key D with his thumb, then playing palm key D without the thumb, and then goes back up to the palm key with the thumb again. So. So that's palm key D, palm key D, C, D, C, B flat. Those triplets you have to work on guys, it's quite tricky to move your whole hand. You know, that's all in the wrist. That's my wrist going da -dee da da -dee da da -dee da You can see, look at my wrist there. See how much, how active my wrist is. D, C, D, D, C, D, it's all in the wrist. So D, C, D, C, B flat, landing on this B flat there. Next bit. Now it kind of does this with a little bit rubato. Rubato is this kind of giving and taking of time. So it's sort of, Rush, he almost rushes the first little bit and then pulls it right back into the middle of the phrase. So he goes. Which is, sounds really, really cool and lazy and, and you know, Halloween-y, that's what we're after here. So we've got regular C, E flat with the octave key, G, then B flat C, B flat C, B flat. And it's worth breaking this up in little small chunks. So I might do the first three notes at first. Just get used to that a little bit and then maybe play the next bar. You can use side C here if you want to, so B flat and side C. I find side C is a little bit sharp on my sax when you play it like this, so I'm normally, I normally go for this one and I'm trying to keep it quite quiet, so I actually move my fingers like this. But you can use side C as well, which is the second button here. If you want to get really neat technique, so I'll practice that bit next. And then come back down, G, E flat. So you want to imply, sort of apply the practice techniques that we go over a lot in these videos. And that is that you might want to take this backwards. So you go G, E flat. And then B flat, G, E flat. And then add the C in. And then add the next B flat and just work the phrase backwards like that. That way you'll really get your head around it and your fingers will thank you for it too. You'll get much more, um, 
much more consistent with these phrases. Okay, so we're getting to the altissimo a bit now. So what we're going to do there is, again, a G minor arpeggio. We've got a G with the octave key, B flat, palm key D. Now what we're going to do is, we're going to use the long F sharp. We're going to use just one finger. This is the easiest way to get this note, really. We're going to play a high F sharp with an alternate fingering. So we're going to play bis B flat with our first hand. So our left hand is going to do bis B flat. My index finger in the right hand is going to play side A sharp or B flat, the side B flat key, this one here. And I'm going to flatten that to play the long F sharp key as well. So you've got the long F sharp, high F sharp key. So I've got bis B flat, side B flat, and this long F sharp key. That will give me the high F sharp. And that's the note we're after. So just have a try at that guys on its own at first. Bis B flat, F sharp, long F sharp, and side B flat. That one should, you should find that that comes out relatively easily. It's a high note, but just listen to this video, listen to the note, pause the video, and then try the fingering. You've got to hear it. It's really important that you hear that, and don't squeeze too hard either, otherwise you might get... Yeah, anything can happen off that note. It's a little bit, a little bit um, sort of tentative, really, so you've got to just be a little bit careful with which notes you're going to get out. So we're going to go bis B flat one more time, side B flat, and that high F sharp. And then what I'm going to do is, to get the G, I've got, there's my high F sharp, I'm going to just slide my first finger up a key, lifting that bis B flat key. So all that's happening is, there's the F sharp that I've explained already, and I'm just going to slide my left hand up a key. Can you hear that? So that's really important, that guys. It's a hard fingering. You might want to put, the, as I say, if you're struggling with this fingering, well, to get through the piece, to stick it down an octave, literally all an octave. So you go normal G, B flat, D natural, F regular F sharp, and then G at the top. And then you can jump back into this piece. So you might go. You know, it does, it sounds absolutely fine doing it that way. So if you're struggling with the altissimo notes, for now, just put it down the register. Then come back to it, put this in your practice routine. Okay, so we get to the end of that. We just play that altissimo G. We play a regular palm key D. And then you have this little phrase in this next line at bar 85. B flat, C, B flat, A, B flat. A good technique there would be to use that side C again. B flat, C, side C, B flat, A, B flat, all with the octave key. So one, two, and three, and up to a palm key D, triplet on C, palm key D, and C. And then put the B flat and C at the end. And then the end of that is the G, uh, sorry, B flat with the octave key, G and loading. So what you're going to do, struggle with is getting that all stuck together. You might be able to do it together in parts, but what's going to be very difficult is sticking it all together. Do the thing where we work backwards, work backwards through the rhythm and try and get a goal in your mind. It might be that I want to do the two bars there from that palm key D to the end. My mission here is to go from the palm key D in 86 and get right through to that low D without stopping. Doesn't have to be at super speed. In fact, all of this tune you should be playing slowly at first. Let you, give your fingers time to settle down into it and then increase the tempo over time. Right at the end there, I love the things you do. G, 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 palm key D. Next line, G, G. Some rest again. Cause change, E flat. Ba, ba, E flat, E flat. Just tongue twice and hold that E flat on. 
That's like what just came earlier. E flat, F, F sharp, and then that fall again. Back to D, so that's the same as what came before. Onto that next line, lots of palm kiddies. So what you're gonna do here is make sure you're playing on the first beat of each bar. One, two, three, B, two, three, B, two, three, B, G, B flat, D. So you've got this. G, B flat, D. Again, you know, at speed, you're gonna be struggling with that one. On to the next line, so it's the G, B flat, D again, just repeated. A little cool run there, but it's quite tricky again. Normal palm key D to C to palm key D. So this tune really works that wrist, doesn't it? It really works that wrist and that movement between C and D. So you've got D, C, D, C, D, C, D, C, B flat, G, down to low E flat. And then you've got that one, two, three. And we're gonna play on two and three for the next three bars. So it's one, G, B flat, Next line, one. One. Two Gs, G, G, one, two, three, D, C. Long C. Down. C, D, B flat. Next line, onto one, two, four. So that bit sounds like this, and just sticking it together with the previous bar on there, that C, D, B flat, so you get. I like doing a little fall off this C, so that C goes. So that's C, D with the octave key, normal C, B flat, A. Now we're going to jump up the register just by sticking our octave key on for the two high A's. So that's A, A, two, three, the octave key, A, two, three, F sharp, G, two, three. Then on to the last line. So here, what we can do is G, A, B flat, all with the octave key, back to G. And then we're gonna do that high G movement again. So palm key, sorry, B flat, this B flat here with the octave key. Palm key D, up to that high F sharp again. So this B flat, side B flat, high F sharp, and then slide up to the G. You should hopefully be all right there with that one again, but you can, again, that ending, if you're struggling with the artist mode, stick it down the register. That's B flat, D, F sharp, long G, wait for the drums to kick in, and make sure you finish in time with the drums and the kick at the end. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching. Tricky lesson, actually, tricky song. There's lots in it, but very fun to play along with as well. So make sure you're really paying attention to all those little details and it'll sound super cool. And hopefully you can get it ready for Halloween. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Any comments, questions, please, um, you know, get in touch with me. Write them down in the comment section below or join Satscasts and, you know, my, I'm always open to questions and answering them. And even in video format, I often do them in video format for students too. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please like and share this video. I'd really, really appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next tutorial. See you then. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.